Right, so for 80, we have that the first derivative of the function f is defined by f prime of x equal to this. Um, for for negative one point for x between negative 1.5 and 1.5. On uh, which of the following intervals is the graph of f concave up? Okay, so we're given the derivative. So what like you can do is analyze the graph of the derivative and see where it's increasing because it's gonna be concave up when f prime is increasing. Not necessarily it has to be positive or it has to be negative. It just has to be going, it has, it has to be increasing, it has to be going up, it has to be getting larger. So um, let's go ahead, let's graph this with our graphing technology. Let's see what we get. Always be careful to not make a mistake when you enter your equation because it's happened to me. And then it's very annoying. Plus one. Here we go. Whoa. That is one gnarly graph. Let's zoom in on this. Let's zoom in on this guy. What the hell is going on? I'm just very excited with this. Okay, so it's doing some cool stuff. It's going up, down. Okay, so you can see like from here to here, it's, it's increasing. Um, so let's try to analyze them. Um, analyze the maximum here. We want to see where it stops um, increasing. So if we're going to go from there. So we have a local max at about negative 1.34. So um, it's increasing up to negative 1.34. So we can know, we know that it'll, oh, it looks like our answer is already gonna be A. We don't even need to check the other one, but let's just, let's just keep on going. Because see, it's, we see the graph is going up, up to there. Then from negative 1.34 to here, it's decreasing. And then from this point to that point, it's gonna be increasing again. So we can just go ahead and analyze the graph just to make sure that you really understand this. For whatever reason, I mean, mouse is not, it's not scrolling, there we go. We see you have another local max of about nine points, about 0.964. So it's increasing on this interval there too. See, so then it's gonna be A. Number 81, during a rainfall, the depth of water in a rain gauge increases at a rate modeled by R of t equals 0.5 plus t cosine of pi t cubed over 80, where t is the time in hours since the start of the rainfall and R of t is measured in centimeters per hour. How much is the depth of water in the rain gauge increased from zero to three hours? Okay, so we're given the, the depth of water, the, the, or the rate of the depth of water, and so all we have to do is integrate this. We just got to integrate this from zero to three. That'll give us a total over that time period. So we just integrate R of t from zero to three. And we can just use our graphing calculator to figure that out. We just go to the calculus function, numerical integral, zero, three. Again, let's just be careful that we enter our function correctly. 0.5 plus x times the cosine of pi x cubed. divided by 80. 
Let me put this in parentheses just to make sure that there's not a mistake there. No, no. Let me see a parent. I think I put too many parentheses. You get paranoid about entering my terms and errors. Let me do this again. 0. 0.5 plus x times the cosine of pi t cubed over 80. Pi x cubed over 80. That should be enough. What the heck? Function is not defined. Let me check my. X times the cosine of pi. Pi x cubed. That divided by 80. I'm going to take away the 0. 0.5 being added and then I'll integrate that after. So that plus integral of point, so that plus integral of 0. 0.5 from 0 to 3. So this plus the integral five point four. There we go. So I, for some reason, it doesn't let me enter together. But there we go. That there's a lesson we can learn. Um, that's some problem solving. So I just broke it up into two integrals. Point that integral I integrated plus this integral. From zero to three, and we get our answer is D. I live and learn. 82. Let f be the function such that f of one equals negative two and f of five equals seven, which of the following conditions ensures that f of c equals zero for some value c in the open interval one, five. Oh, well, this is just the mean value theorem. So we just have to make sure that. Um, that it's continuous essentially and and um we can that's what well, we just have that's just asking for that because it's, it's we're going f of one is negative two so basically f of one is negative two so that'd be one negative two let's say f of five seven point five seven So these points connect somehow. Maybe a straight line, maybe some, who knows. But um, they connect somehow. So for them to connect somehow, it has to some it has to pass through the, you know, through the x-axis or the line y equals zero, right? That's the only way it would make sense. There's no way for them to connect to each other without passing through zero. That's 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 just pretty that's pretty much the logic behind it. It's just intermediate value theorem. And 83, the acceleration of the particle moving along the x-axis x axis is given by a of t equals t minus eight times the sine of t for t between zero and eight. At what value of t is the particle's velocity decreasing most rapidly? Okay, so um, remember, acceleration describes the rate of change of velocity. So if we just graph this, it's going to be decreasing most rapidly at the lowest value of a of t. Um, so let's, let's, let's analyze the graph.
Hopefully we don't have any technical difficulties here. So x minus eight. Times the sine of x Whoa. So from zero to eight. Let's zoom out a little bit. We want to basically find them the lowest value on this part. So from zero to eight. So it's definitely gonna be over here. So let's analyze the minimum. And so then we can see that it's gonna be over there at 1.42 and negative 6.51. So the answer will be B. Um, don't get thrown off because I think that what this problem is trying to get at is that um, if you see that acceleration is negative, you won't consider it. Maybe like you may be, I think they're trying to see if you'll get confused to only consider positive acceleration values. But no, acceleration and velocity um, have direction. So um, it's about what we, in physics, we say magnitude. So it's basically um, like a, something with an acceleration of negative, let's say negative 10 meters squared um, per second or something. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be moving faster in something with acceleration of five, positive five because the negative just means it's moving in the, in the other direction. So don't get thrown off by that. Okay, so I hope that helps. Good luck.